Did you know that students are at the forefront of protecting forests on the East Coast from an invasive species? The hemlock woolly adelgid is a small insect native to Japan. According to the United States Forest Service, this pest was first introduced in the eastern United States back in 1951. Since its initial, unintentional introduction, the hemlock woolly adelgid has wreaked havoc on the North American hemlock tree population. But they have yet to be found in northern Maine. I spoke with Maggie Harvey, a senior program manager at the Gulf of Maine Research Institute, about the Hemlock Woolly Adelgid Project. It's one of the many community science research projects that the Institute currently supports in this unique, biodiverse region. Each year, around 35 to 40 communities stretching from Massachusetts all the way up to Maine and even Nova Scotia, Canada, participate in collaborative research projects as part of the Ecosystem Investigation Network. Maggie told me this includes between 5,000 and 7,000 classroom students. These projects are designed for community members, including educators and their students, to participate in hands-on, shared research that investigates how climate change is affecting their local ecosystems. As part of the Hemlock Woolly Adelgid project, students monitor changes in tree health over time and document signs of the woolly adelgids on hemlock trees in their local environments. This data is collected in a publicly accessible database that helps track the spread of this invasive species over time. So it's actually pretty easy to figure out what trees have woolly adelgids on them. Uh, according to the Maine Forest Service, the adelgid produces a white woolly substance around its eggs, and you can typically find them on the underside of hemlock needles. Now, if a hemlock tree is infested, its needles will turn kind of a gray greenish color and become very dry before eventually falling off uh, onto the ground. While it's difficult to see forests suffering from the spread of this invasive pest, Maggie told me that the Gulf of Maine Research Institute tries to focus on actions that are hopeful and positive and that bring people together, even in the face of these rapid changes. According to Maggie, the data collected by these community scientists has shown that there is a strong link between temperature changes and the spread of the adelgid. So during cold snaps, the adelgid populations decrease. But as temperatures rise and winters become more moderate in the Gulf of Maine, adelgid populations are surging and continuing to spread further and further along the East Coast. The data collected by these students participating in the Hemlock Woolly Adelgid Project is currently being used to inform decision-making about forest maintenance and stewardship as communities work together to prevent the spread of this invasive species. And Maggie says that the community science element is vital to this effort. She told me that one of the reasons is because no one observes or notices or is prepared to document the change in a community quite like somebody who lives there and works there. So when it comes to long-term research into the impacts of climate change on local environments, she says having people who are invested in that place and who know the place well are critical in documenting changes that we're seeing in our communities and in our ecosystems. To learn more about the Ecosystem Investigation Network and the other community science projects being spearheaded by the Gulf of Maine Research Institute, you can visit investigate.gmri.org. And if you're an educator who's interested in getting their classroom students involved, you can find the Gulf of Maine's science learning resources at teach.gmri.org. Or you can talk to Meggie herself by emailing mharvey at gmri.org. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on Did You Know?